CM365 All about Carnatic music Why do we like a song? Why is it that we listen to a particular song many times and still want to keep listening to it? And why do we sometimes dislike a song? Well, there are various reasons actually for us to like a song. It may be the lyrical content, which may be simple and communicative, and we may be able to relate to it somehow. Or it may be the melodic aspect, or sometimes when the particular song, even if it is an unfamiliar song, a new song, if it is sung by a very popular person whom you are familiar with, immediately you are able to associate yourself and you start liking the song. Basically, I belong to a family actually which is uh, does not have any great uh, classical music background and most of them like to listen to only bhajans, devotional songs, shlokas, etc. I as a classical musician have wondered why these people have not been able to assimilate aspects of Carnatic music or why a Carnatic uh, heavy classical piece does not appeal to them. This has always been in my mind and uh, after a bit of pondering, I have tried to derive some few on, uh, points for you, uh, which I thought will be interesting also to share. In the sense that uh, now as a researcher, I am more analytical. So why do I like classical music is because of the fact that I am more analytical also when I listen to a new song, I try to decipher its scale, its melodic content, its movement, rhythm, etc. And uh, as a musician for us, all of us, we see that our intention is definitely to create material that resonates and are appreciated by those receiving the work. Now, from the listener's point of view, what are the aspects actually which make one uh, become fond of a particular song. The first thing is about the familiar patterns and ragas. Now, if a particular composition in, is in a ragam which is familiar to you, immediately you develop a connect and you start liking that particular composition, though it may be new. When you have heard a popular song repeatedly, what happens is that we know the lyrics, we know how the melody flows, we know how the rhythm goes, and it is actually almost like as if we are creating the music and the music is part of us. And in this context, we see that for the common people, the more uh, uh, people, you know, the who are not inclined to classical music, they like this kind of uh, light devotional or the shlokas for the fact that first thing is, of course, it's a simplicity of the tune. The second thing is also very important about the repetitive nature of the melody. In shlokas, you see that every stanza is repeated in the same melody. So that way, even if you don't understand the lyrics, I'm sure that most people who listen to shlokas as such uh, really do not know the inner meaning and all of these uh, shlokas. It's in fact a lifetime pursuit to even understand all the lyrical content in its uh, deepest sense. But then because of the fact that the music is repetitive, it's very easy to follow. It's very, very easy to assimilate and also to buy heart it mechanically. And that way we start associating and start liking the song. Now, this is what we call as the element of safety in patterns. When we listen to a new or unfamiliar song, our brain actually is actively searching for recognizable patterns in the unknown sound. For example, if I know the song, Shambho Mahadeva, and somebody sings uh, another composition in the same ragam like, Shiva, 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 Yenarada. Here, with the known tune of the Shambho Mahadeva, I try to associate that to the unfamiliar song that I'm hearing now and try to develop some kind of a connect. We are receptive to the new sound. It is just that if the brain can't detect the pattern, we don't like the song. So when we are able to develop the connect, what happens is that we become very comfortable and the next song also we start liking. But now if you are not able to associate anything at all with that song, what happens is that we slowly try to, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you don't uh, react to that song and you also won't like the song. But if you actually, the next point is how to like something which is more complex, is that you have to really spend a lot of time, I would say, in terms of listening intently. And uh, once you listen intently and you try to decipher the pattern of the melody, the rhythm, what happens is that there are chances 
that you start liking that particular song which you actually did not like initially and slowly it will grow into you and you will start liking it all the more. This is what is called as the exposure effect. Now, as I also said earlier, repetition makes the unfamiliar also familiar. And uh, why we always say that uh, Carnatic music can never become the uh, music of the masses is because of the fact that it contains very complex patterns. The whole structure has got very complex patterns in terms of the melody, in terms of the rhythm. Even the lyrics you see that if you look at compositions like that of Dikshadar, it's a very, very complex thing. And that is why we see that uh, such songs of the classical variety appeal only to a limited uh, kind of, you know, limited number of people. Whereas the compositions which are more repetitive, as I was mentioning, like the um, Sampradaya Bhajans, the devotional music, the shlokas, where there is repetition and simplicity. This makes for more people liking the songs and making this genre of music more popular. CM 365, all about Carnatic music.